Hello, everyone, and welcome to Encompass Live. We have this show almost every week, just one or two a year that we don't have on Wednesday mornings at 10 Central Time. And we're very glad you're here. Or you may be listening to the recording, which is also great. So thank you for tuning in. I do need to remind you of a couple of things. There is a questions uh, box in your GoToWebinar list of things that you can do. And if you have a question, you can type it in there. And I will be watching for that. And I will tell Kathy that, oh, we have a question about something. And we'll try to address it as we go along. Um, also, I'm supposed to remember to tell you that this is recording. This is going to be recorded. And anything you say or type will be out there forever, as we know. Anything on the internet is out there forever so please be kind and gentle um because that's always the best approach i think uh, today we're going to talk about the golden sower award which i'm so excited about because because kathy schultz the chair of the golden sower committee is here today to give you the info about a little bit about history a little bit a little bit about how the golden sower works throughout the year and how you as a librarian or teacher or parent can be become involved to a small level or to a bigger level. So I am going to um, make, let's see, it just takes me a minute. I am going to make Kathy a presenter so you can see her and her computer and we'll learn about the Golden Sower today. So you should be a presenter at any second now, Kathy. There we go. Okay, am I there? No. I still do not see you. I think you're, I think you're fooling. Oh, yeah. there you are. Okay. I thought you were fooling yeah. me. <laughs> well, okay. I just had to figure Where out which button to push. <laughs> <laughs> so, go ahead. Okay, well, thank you, Sally. This is really going to be fun today. I love talking about Golden Sower. All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, okay. and you're, you're pretty clear right now. So we'll try to, I forgot to mention that we have a little sound issue, so we're going to talk a little more slowly and let our, our words stand alone so that we're sure people understand. Right. It's not always easy for me to talk slowly, so I'll do the best I can. <laughs> I get to talking fast. Um, I know that there are people that uh, have had questions about Golden Sower in the past. You know, how, how does it work? And so we thought we'd go back and uh, I'll, I'm going to pull up a PowerPoint here. Okay. And there we go. Is that showing up okay, Sally? Yes, it is. It's loud and clear. Okay. okay. Well, here we have the history of the award. Um, if, um, oops, wait a second here. There we go. Um, the, the award has been going on since 1981. That's when the first award was given. And of course, it's named for the Sower on top of the Capitol building. That's not a sour or a sewer. It is the sower. <laughs> Literature, encourage independent reading, increase library skills, and also we want to uh, them to have an appreciation for excellence in writing and illustrating. So this is what we we're looking for when we're looking for books to put on our nominee list. Um, there are three awards now. Uh, picture books are aimed at uh, kindergarten through second grade, chapter books grades three through five, and the novels grades six through eight or older. Um, we do not care what age kids are. If you have a third grader that wants to vote in, for picture books, that's fine. If you've got um, a second grader that's reading chapter books and wants to avoid that, but we don't really care. We want the kids to read the books that are appropriate for their reading level. Uh, and we also 
changed it a few years ago so that if kids want to vote in more than one category, they can as long as they do the recommended amount of reading. Uh, for example, you could have a grader that reads picture books and chapter books. That's fine. They could vote in both categories as long as they read at least four books from the nominee list, from each nominee list. The first award, as I said, was 1981. And there was only one category um, at that time. It was called chapter books. And the first winner was Benicula, uh, still a favorite of mine. And then two years later, the, the primary award, which we now call picture books, was added. And Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs was the winner. Um, in 1993, the Young Adult Award was added. We now call it the Golden Soul in Novels. And Joan Lowry Nixon won for Whispers from the Dead. So you can see the, the votes, total number of votes increased each year as we added the categories. All schools and libraries in Nebraska may submit votes. Um, there are no fees. You do not have to register. Uh, the voting is done online. And uh, we'll talk about that later when we go to our Golden Soul webpage. And all you need to participate is have copies of the nominees available for the students to read. Now, Kathy, um, I've had a question yeah. before. Can we pop yes. back to that other? Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, a school will be, I mean, lots and lots of schools are participating. But I've had a couple of librarians from the public library ask me, can we collect votes too? And I oh. asked you about that. And yes, yes, you can, but go ahead. I, yeah, I, I worked in the public library before I retired, and I always made it um, uh, the ballots available for kids to vote at my library. Now, I, this was always on the honor system. I always said, if you vote at your school, do not vote here also. And I never had a problem with that. If kids are voting in school, that's great. If they do not have an opportunity to vote at school, sure, I hope that public libraries will give them that opportunity. Plus, any homeschool students uh, could vote at the public library. So yes, it's it's uh, it's great to have public libraries participate in that way also. Besides having the books there for kids to read, uh, give them a chance to vote. Thank you. Yeah, they have to read or hear read. You can read them aloud, students. Um, at least four books from the nominee list. Uh, so there's 10 on each list. They do not have to read all 10. They may if they want, but they do not have to read all 10. And they, like as I said, they may vote in more than one category as long as they've read four books from each of the lists, four picture books or four chapter books, um, whatever. Uh, the votes uh, are always uh, submitted by April 15th online. Um, that should be an easy day to remember because we seem to have April 15th stuck in our brains for some other reason. Uh, and then the winners are announced May 1st. Uh, we tabulate all the votes and uh, that also gives me a chance to notify the winners before it's made public. We like them to know first. And then the authors and illustrators are invited to attend the uh, Nebraska Library Association conference in October to receive their awards. Unfortunately, we didn't have a conference this year. Oh, my goodness. So I had to mail the plaques to them. This is, so, I was very disappointed and I think they were too. Yeah. Uh, these are our winners for 2020. Um, the picture book winner and uh, by Brian Selznick and David Serlin and the chapter book winner, Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris and Golden Sower Novel was Restart by Gordon Corman. Um, and it was interesting this year, the picture book winner and the novel winner were both scholastic titles. So I had one publisher to deal with there. Um, this was the thank you note I received for 
uh, baby monkey private eye. And I thought that was so cute. Um, they were very excited about winning. And since we uh, do not have things up currently in our virtual museum, I wanted to show you the pictures they sent also. There's David Serlin with his award. And his oh, I baby. like his bag of Cheerios <laughs> for a oh, snack. Yes. You see the little the little jeans there? Yes, aren't they cute? <laughs> and here's Brian Silzik. <laughs> I'm just hoping baby um, baby monkey can put those jeans on when he needs to. <laughs> well, I hope so. Yes, and then and then baby monkey left us a note too. So <laughs> that's so yeah, nice. That's exciting. <laughs> the the one <laughs> I ran into this year. Um, the the contact I had at Scholastic had said, um, just you know, you can just mail the award plaques to me and I'll forward them to the authors. And I got a reply right back from Brian Salesnick saying, Oh, that'll, that'll save time if you just mail it. Here's my home address. Unfortunately, I did not hear back with a home address from Gordon Corman, so I mailed it to Scholastic in New York. And as of yesterday, he still has not received it. Oh dear. Yeah, of course, they, they say, well, we're not working in the office right now, but as soon as we get to the office, we'll send it to him. So I don't know when he's going to get it. Things are really strange this year, aren't they, Sally, with COVID? They sure are. It's really tricky. Uh, yeah. Now, a lot, I know a lot of people wonder how we get the titles on these nominee lists. And we depend on teachers and librarians, students, parents, anyone in Nebraska who's read a wonderful book and thinks it should be considered for the Golden Sower list to submit these titles. Um, that's how we that's how we come up with our nominee list. We do not depend on publishers to send us lists. Um, it has to be someone here in Nebraska that has actually read it and thinks it's worthy of consideration. And then the titles uh, that are submitted are put into a list for our volunteer readers. And these volunteer readers read as many of these non, um, titles as possible and try to select the best 10 for each category. Um, there are criteria outlined on our web page, and we'll talk about these right now too. The most important thing I think is the person that's submitting these titles must have read it, not, um, read a review in a magazine and thought it sounded good. We want you to actually read the book. Um, you can nominate or suggest five titles per list per year. And um, students can also submit them, but we ask them to give these titles to their teacher or librarian to, um, to submit for them so that uh, you can, you know, the librarian or teacher can can check and make sure they fit the criteria before they are sent in. Um, we want them to exhibit literary and artistic merit. It has to be published within the last two years. Um, that means right now we are looking for books that have a copyright of 2020 or 2021. So uh, that's the ones we're gonna be reading for this next year. It, we want current titles. Um, and be sure that the content is age appropriate for the readers of the category that, that you're nominating the title for. Um, sometimes people send in nonfiction titles, and this is okay as long as they, uh, they're suitable for reading aloud. Uh, sometimes uh, we have picture book biographies on the picture book list sometimes. That's great. As long as it's something that uh, is not just like a textbook that you would, you know, are, it, it might have good information, but we want something that's going to be fun to read and fun to share with younger kids. If there's a series, uh, which there often is, only the first title in the series may be nominated. Um, this is because often uh, if you get the second or third book in the series, it doesn't make a lot of sense if you haven't read the earlier ones. We want it to be a good standalone read. If it's in the series, 
and that doesn't have a cliffhanger ending to that first one, um, that's great if it, it gets kids excited about wanting to read more. But we want it to be a book that they would be able to pick up and enjoy all by itself and not have to read more books in order to find out what's going to happen next. Um, some stories end kind of leaving you hanging and, and it's not a very satisfying read unless you can find another book to read that tell you what happens. Um, the titles have to be in print, of course, because we want schools and libraries to be able to purchase copies. Um, a Newbery and Caldecott winner is not eligible, but the honor books are. Now, it has happened in the past that we have ended up with a Newbery or Calcutt winner on our list. And this is because we put it on the list before it won that award. And so we do not disqualify it. Once the list has been published, we do not disqualify titles um, just because they won the Newbery or Calcutt. We thought, aha, we recognized it first. <laughs> Uh, th this is another one. Uh, the author and the illustrator has to have to be living in the United States when the book is nominated. Now, uh, the um, this has happened in the past too. The book was nominated and appeared on our list, and then the author passed away. We do not disqualify the book. We feel that. It was worthy of recognition. It filled the requirement of the criteria at the time it was um, nominated and made the list. And we assume that the family member, a uh, family member would be probably thrilled to get this award if the book was chosen by the students. Um, uh, an author cannot have more than one title on a list at the same time. Um, the authors can be repeated in uh, future years, but you can't repeat the same title. And, and then this one is kind of tricky, this last one. The winning author will be excluded from competition the following year. Now, this has happened sometimes in the past. Uh, for example, Gordon Corman won the 2020 Novel Award, and I believe he has a title on this current nominee list for 2021, uh, kids can read that and count that book as the uh, one of the four that they've read, but he would not be uh, eligible to receive votes. That's It's kind of a tricky one. We do not want this to be just a, a oh, I, I know I liked his last book and, and you know, he can, he can uh, win because he won last year you know it'll be a it, it's it's kind of tricky but that that rule has been there all along usually it's not a problem every once in a while that crops up and if you want to suggest titles be sure you think of them as something that that a book would a, a child would pick up that book and enjoy reading it not just that it would fit the school curriculum if it does that's a you know a nice extra, but uh, it's not the way we select our books. And here there's the April 15th date again. You need to submit these titles by April 15th. And somewhere in there, did you mention the, um, I think I saw it on the list. I can't remember if we focused on it. Each individual can nominate up to five titles per list. Right but not more than that because we get flooded with too many things to right. consider reasonably. Well, yeah, it's kind of hard if, you're, if your readers are trying to go through a list of 200 picture books or something like that. It it's just makes it uh, difficult. We want you to submit titles only the best ones. Yeah, yeah, this is a nice book, and, uh, but I want it to be an outstanding book if we're going to put it on our list. Uh, there are a lot of titles that it's great to have in your library, but but we want only the best of the best on our list. So yeah, to, you use some discrimination when you're sending in these titles. And this is how you suggest them. Uh, the picture book and the chapter book lists are compiled by 
uh, Shauna Lindner at the Kearney Public Library. And Jill Annis uh, is a school librarian and she takes care of our Golden Soul novel list. And then our volunteer readers, you know, as these titles are suggested, they have created groups on Goodreads. They are private uh, groups only for our readers. And uh, if, you, if you want to be a reader, you also would contact Shauna for the picture book or chapter book list and Jill for the Golden Soul novel list. And uh, they will, you would get an invitation to be a part of this Goodreads group. You can, you can start reading the books now, you know, that are, that are up there right now. And every time they get a new one suggested, they just add it to that, uh, that bookshelf on Goodreads. And it really makes it uh, an easy way to share comments also as the readers read them. They'll put in, oh, yes, this was great, or, oh, maybe I had a problem with this one because, you know, it, it stimulates some discussion about, about the books as you're reading them, which I think is really neat. And sometimes that guides me. I'm reading all three lists because I'm crazy, but um, oh, I, get too, as I, look at, crazy too. I look at what people <laughs> say and they go, that this book has 12 negative comments. I'm not going to read it now. I'm going to read these other ones that I haven't read yet because I think they're more likely to be a golden solar quality book. Does that make sense how I put that? I think so. If you don't have time to get them all read, especially, it, it maybe guide you to, like you say, to read the ones that that have more positive comments and put those others off and you know read them later if you have time and make your own decision of course but uh it might help you prioritize which ones you want to read first now if you uh, yeah. read one and it yeah. has several negative comments and also some good comments please don't hesitate to put your comments there because if you love it oh, yes. tell people you love it and why i like it when people say why they love a book or why they have a problem with the book Oh, because exactly. that makes more sense. Sorry. Yeah, I think that's that's very important to have those positives and negatives, so you can make your own decision too. Yeah, that's a good a good point. And if people need to contact me about anything, there's my email address. And I Thanks. think yeah, um, I'm going to close this, and we'll go to the Golden Soul web page. How about that? That's a good idea. Here we are. Okay, here's the golden soul. Can you see it, Sally? Yes, we see it. Thank you. Great. All right. Um, now, if you look up here, it says sites.google.com. Uh, don't worry about that. All you need to do is type in goldensoar.org, and it will take you to this site. A number of years ago, we had a problem with the website. We moved it, and and uh, so. If you type goldensower.org, you will get to our web page. Um, it will take you directly to this. Um, and there's so much available here for adults working with the program. Um, first of all, you can click here to go to our Facebook page. And you'll get uh, not a lot of stuff. I'm the one that posts things on that Facebook page, and I'm not a great one for doing that, but oh well. <laughs> I try to I try to post pictures and um, announcements. Oh, look there! Sally and I are going to be on the uh, Encompass Live. <laughs> <laughs> but here's an important one: join our mailing list. This will not flood your inbox with lots and lots of email, but you will get things like uh, a reminder that it's time to submit your votes, um, a re an announcement when the uh, winners have been announced uh, you know just just strictly golden store information and not a lot of emails so if you uh, want to keep up to date please uh, sign in here it's very easy if you go there let's see oh my look at there you just fill in your name and your email address and submit and that's that's all it takes that's so, not very complicated. Nope, pretty easy. Um, here, well, this will take us to a 
link for the uh, a list of this year's this school year's nominees and uh, it's a pdf document that you can print off so that you uh, you have them all and it's uh, six pages long so it's not too bad but here it's very important here's the nominees for next school year they were just announced a few weeks ago we try to get this up by September 1, it was a few days later this year because of COVID, but uh, if you click there, you can pull up the list of all the nominees for the 2021-2022 school year. This is, uh, we try to get these up early because uh, libraries and schools like to purchase the books and have them available when school starts in August or whenever it's going to start. So we try to get it up as soon as possible. It's also sometimes, you know, if there's a great demand and you need to wait for a reprint, order them early because, you know, you want to be sure and have them on the shelf for the kids when, uh, when the school year starts. But we've got some wonderful titles, I think, coming up for that 2021-2022 school year. So I'm hoping people read them and get as excited as we are about them. On the home page, we also we post the winners from 2020. Of course, that'll change next year. Down here at the bottom, it mentions that we now sell our manual on Teachers Pay Teachers. But I'm encouraging all Nebraskans at least to buy them from our store, buy the manual. Um, if you buy it directly from the Golden Source store, Golden Source gets to keep all the money. If you buy it from Teachers Pay Teachers, we get a small part. So, you know, that's just the way commerce works. Uh, but what this has done is increased our reach with our manual. Uh, people can go on to Teachers Pay Teachers and buy the activities for a single book, if that's the one they're using in their school, and people from all over the country could purchase these activities, not just uh, Nebraska librarians. So that's kind of why we put it on Teachers Pay Teachers to make it uh, make our audience larger. So if that makes sense, here's the store. I'm going to show you that right now since we're talking about the manual. If you click there, we sell things in our store to help make money to promote the program uh, normally we would need money to uh, bring authors and illustrators to nebraska to receive their awards this year well i guess the good thing about covid is we saved money right i don't think that's that was not that was not what we wanted to do but oh well uh, the manual is not available any longer in print form it has gotten too expensive to print the manual and uh the cost of postage was uh very high so now we have a, a usb drive and you will receive the manual on a usb drive uh, so uh it's much easier it's very easy to stick it in your computer and you can print out whatever you need to from the manual uh, you can purchase stickers to put on the books to identify the nominees in your library. Um, there's a rubber stamp that you can get. Uh, I was stamped um, inside the cover of the books and wrote the year that it was nominated because kids like to go back and, and look at those and say, oh, look, this, this was a nominee two years ago. Um, we have a pewter pin of the sewer that you can, that you can get. Uh, I use these uh, triangle stickers on the covers of the books to uh, let the kids know which books were the winners. And uh, so, oh my goodness, look at that. Now, here, I have the old mug. Can you see that, Sally? Yes, we can. Okay. And I yes. have the old one, but I'm going to I'm gonna have to buy the blue one, too, to have a set. Right. right. You're going to have to have one of each, right? <laughs> so. Um, there's post-it notes, there's balloons, lanyards, um, and then we have bookmarks down here. Oh, pencils, if you need something, small items that you, know, you want to give the kids. But we have uh, 
sometimes the winning uh, picture book illustrator will donate a drawing for us to use to make a bookmark. And here we have Gaston, which was the 2017 winner. The 2015 <laughs> Creepy Carrots, that's a fun one. And then the 2019 Madeline Finn and the Library Dog, uh, that one is a little more expensive because she did one in color for us and it's beautiful. Uh, and she did a, a special drawing with the state of Nebraska on it. I thought that was wonderful. And oh, little alert here. We will be having baby monkey bookmarks coming as soon as they're ready from the printer. So keep an eye on our store for those. They are going to be cute. Um, let's see. Oh, there's a, a bag. I love my tote bag. And look, I'm wearing my shirt. Did you notice that? I, I did. You know. <laughs> but uh, how many opportunities do I get to do that? Here? Um, here's a We Forgot Brock bookmark from 2018. So these are all available. Uh, Payment and orders go to Artist Moody, one of our committee members in Lincoln. Her email address is here. If you have questions, you can click to get the order form. All the um, all the prices on here include tax and shipping. So you you know we've got that all um, all included in the price. Uh, and please always print off a new order form each time you order. Uh, sometimes people come up with an order form that they printed off four or five years ago and the prices have changed, the items have changed, some things on there may no longer be available on the old order form, you know, that, that we don't have them anymore. So please always use an, uh, a new order form. You can either click here for the order form, or I think there was uh, a place up at the top too, right here. And if you click there, it'll just pull up a PDF that you can print off that has all the items and the prices listed. And the address, everything's on the order form. So let's go back and see what else we have on here. When you go to this uh, link, you can find out some of the things we already talked about, the history of the program, um, the selection criteria, um, this history of voting, some people might find that interesting, that is the total number of votes each year since the award began. Wow. And I think that's very interesting. Here's where the young adult one uh, was added. These two years, we've lost those figures. We, if, if we find them, we'll stick them in there, but there, we didn't find them in our archives. I'm not sure what happened. Something got thrown away, Sally, can you imagine? I can't imagine how something could get misplaced. I know. And and look at this. This is what was so sad this year. Due to schools being closed in March before the voting ended, a lot of students were not able to get their votes in. And we felt so bad about that, but there really there wasn't much we could do. Um, this year, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Next year, we'll be back up to, you know, closer to 70,000. Um, so the voting link is right here. And the voting site goes live on November 1st. I want to be sure and mention this because if, um, in particular, the picture books, if you, a uh, librarian or teacher, is reading them, all 10 of the books to a class, and has them all done November 1st or December or January, you don't have to wait till April to submit your votes. Go ahead, as soon as you finish reading the 10th book, have your, your uh, picture book kids go ahead and vote and submit those votes. Uh, that would have helped us a lot this year. Um, but otherwise, you know, if you wait till April, then you have to go back and refresh their memory what the book was about. So go ahead and, and have them vote while they're fresh in their minds. Now, I know with the chapter books and the novels, you want to give them as much time as possible to get books read. You don't, you know, you don't want them to necessarily vote in November. So this is probably more for the picture book winners. But it's very easy to submit your, your votes. 
there will just be a link here to, to click on once they go live that will take you directly to a document where you submit your total votes, not just the ones that were the winner in your classroom or your school, but the total number of votes for each of the 10 titles. If there's a title got zero votes, put in a zero there. But it's important that you submit all of the votes because they're tabulated from all over the state. And just because um, one book didn't get many votes in your school, maybe it got a lot of votes in another school. So they all count. So be sure that every single vote gets submitted. Uh, let's see here nominees. This will take you to lists for this year, this school year's list. I'll show you one of those. It's just a list of the titles. Um, and this is interesting because this will tell you the entire history from when the award began. If you go to this page, you'll get every single picture book winner from the beginning to the You froze a little bit, Kathy, so we're not hearing you right now. I'm okay, just a second. Something. There we go. I heard that. Something. I had a notice pop up. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Yes. Okay. If you go to this last document, past nominees and winners, this will show you every single title that has ever been nominated. Oh, wow. Here, the very first year, 1981, there's the winner and there's the honor books. Those are kind of like runners up, just like in the Caldecott and Newberry. And if you notice, these are all the other nominees. There's more than 10 titles there because yeah. when they worked again, they had 15 titles on the list. And so there's a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> a, lot a, lot of books to read. a lot of books to read. And I believe it changed after the, let me go down to 1993, 94. I think it was after the, uh, I'm hoping I'm not making you dizzy here, scrolling down. Um, after the uh, Young Adult Award was added, they went to 10. And then we said, you know, that's probably a good idea. Let's do that with the other two awards also. Um, partly it's, it's a, the number of books the kids need to read. That's a lot of books, 15. Of course, nobody had to read all 15, but still that was a lot of books. And also uh, cost-wise, that was a lot of books for schools and libraries to purchase because many purchased, uh, multiple copies right. so we decided you know 10 maybe is a, a good number for all of the lists so it's been 10 ever since um we talked about the voting uh this is some frequently asked questions you might look through there and it might answer your questions if you don't find the answer to your question there you can go over here to contact us and here's a list of uh members of the golden sore committee and their uh, their tasks on the committee and you can take the uh, email addresses there and send your question uh, your questions directly to the, the appropriate person if you can't figure out who to ask you can ask me that's fine um, but uh let's see oh i wanted to be sure and mention that uh dana fontaine is uh the um co-editor along with me I do all the proofreading oh my gosh I hope I do good every year I think I've done it perfectly and as soon as I look at the manual I think oh my goodness I made a mistake but uh, that's life right I'm human um, but she's our manual editor and we depend on volunteers to prepare the activities and uh, pages that go into this manual and if you are interested in taking one of those new nominees for the 2021-2022 school year and preparing activities for the manual for us, she would be the one to contact uh, and let her know uh, which title you'd like to work on. 
And as a thank you, you will receive a free copy of the manual next spring after it's been prepared. You'll get the USB. Well, actually, I think she will just email it to you probably. I That'll say postage too. But you'll get the entire manual free of charge. And the yeah. manual includes activities for all 30 nominees, all three of the, of the levels. So let's see. Is there anything else that I've forgotten as we went along here? Um, boy. I just checked and we didn't have any questions yet, but let me look again. No, not yet. If you have a okay. question that has been answered, Here's um, Shauna oh. Lindner and Jill Annis that work with the, uh, the readers, our volunteer readers. Oh, I know, we were going to talk about uh, becoming a member of the committee. Yes, um, yes. Uh, the only requirement uh, to be a member of the Golden Sower Committee is uh, it's open to all members of the school library, let's see, school Children's of lot youth, but well, uh, what is it? Skip. School children <laughs> and young you. people. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I couldn't say it this morning. Uh, <laughs> Skip section of the Nebraska Library Association because Skip is the sponsor of our award. So all members of the school children and young people section of the Nebraska Library Association are welcome to become members and help us with on this committee. However, there are other ways that you can help without being a, a, a member of SKIP. All of our, uh, uh, many of our volunteer readers are not members of SKIP. They are teachers, librarians, uh, some parents uh, from Nebraska that want to read these books and help us select the final nominee lists. And we depend on their input. Um, this these lists are not put together by one person this is a they take it very seriously and we have some very um interesting discussions um you know pros and cons on books and trying to trying to get the best uh most comprehensive lists we can um and these readers take it very seriously and it's a big commitment a time commitment to read as many books as possible now this this year with COVID, it was especially challenging because it made it difficult to get to libraries to to find these books to read. Um, I have to tell you, Sally, I read all three lists also, and a number of the picture book uh, suggestions that were on our list, I had to go to YouTube and try to find somebody reading the book on YouTube in order to see the book and find out what the story was like and help make my decisions that way, which was a good option uh, this year. I, I was glad that was available. Now in other years, and hopefully in the future again, there have been uh, the Seward Nebraska Library has held this longer, but they have all the picture books and they had a special right. day where whoever could make it that day came in the morning, they opened at nine and you just sat and read picture books. It's my favorite meeting of the year. And you could get all yeah. of the books read, but um, yeah, this year- that was, Yeah, that was fun. And Carney Public Library started doing that a couple of years ago also. Um, usually, uh, let's see, the one in Seward was usually the Friday before Memorial Day, and the one in Kearney was um, early June, I believe. So I think they did have the books available at Kearney um, maybe in June or July when they opened up. But, you know, of course, you had to, like, make an appointment to come in, and they could only take so many people at a time because they were trying to socially distance around the room. So um, at and least Seward, they, they did make the effort. Seward did that too, because I went to Seward with the, my friend and she and I sat there all morning and read picture books, but it was just her and I, mm -hmm. and we socially distanced. And I asked them about, you know, should we wear plastic gloves to touch the books? And she said, well, we're telling people that, you know, let's come and read at your own risk. They're not, I yes. mean, they yeah. wipe the books off, but that is not a guarantee that, completely clean 
Right. So, well, we, we're doing the best we can, uh, just like everyone, I guess, in this this uh, time. But uh, we're hoping that kids are back in school and able to read these books. Um, it's really, it's, uh, you know, it, everything has changed this year, hasn't it, Sally? But this is a good place to find email addresses it's if you need to contact. Uh, if you have a question of any kind, uh, please send me an email. Uh, and if somebody else on the um, on the committee is better able to answer the question, I will forward the question to them. Um, we have our webmaster here who does the web page, uh, our historian. Uh, there's there are uh, a lot of jobs kind of behind the scenes with Golden Sower that most people probably don't see or think about, but it, it is confusing, I know, when we're talking about the nominees, you know, we're talking about this year's books, next year's books, the year after that. Uh, so it's it's hard sometimes to keep that all straight in my mind, but I do my best. Let's see, is there anything else we need to be talking about on our homepage, do you think, Sally? I think we talked about everything there. I think we've hit most of the, the things we've talked about presenting. Yeah, I'm looking over my notes. I think, um, oh, I know, we've, we'll talk about suggesting the books. Um, I'm trying to think if it's listed here. Yes, here also it tells you uh, where to send your suggestions. If you found a wonderful book that uh, fits our criteria and you want it considered for the Golden Star Award, please send the titles to Shauna or Jill, depending on which list you think it's appropriate for. And this is what you need to include. Uh, they will need the author's name, title, uh, illustrator's name, if there is an illustrator, publisher, copyright date, ISBN, and please include the state in the United States where the author lives, because that is one of our requirements. The author uh, and or the illustrator must live in the United States. Uh, they don't have time to look up all of these books, so you need to include that information. And as I said, we are currently looking for books that have a 2020 or 2021 copyright date and they will add these to the goodreads bookshelf until april 15th next year next spring and those will be the ones that we're selecting oh my gosh let me see if i can say it right the 2022 2023 school year <laughs> i think <laughs> and also while you're talking about the timeline the the lists will be complete so to speak by april 15th or soon after they'll get everything on there and then you have until roughly the middle or end of july and to read I as think, much as you can right i think usually it's in the past it's been toward the end of july to get all those books read and that's why having them on the goodreads bookshelf helps because if the books are up there, you could go ahead and start reading them now. You don't have to wait till April 15th to start reading them, um, which is kind of the way it used to be before we had all this wonderful stuff on the computer. You would get a list in, uh, in the mail in April and, and you think, oh my gosh, I can read all these books before the end of July. But you know, you, you can start now. And um, the uh, well, I was going somewhere with that, Sally, and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> that happens um, to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> my train of thought got derailed. <laughs> but yes, um, I think that's a good thing to emphasize is to start now, because there's, I think, 13 books on the novels list right now, and I've read three or four of them already, so like, I'm, I'm already good to go. I'm not, I I'm want just, more maybe, good books on that list, but I yeah. can read several while we wait i remember this year now we we did extend it the readers we gave them until about august 22nd or something like that instead of the end of july and then we we had a zoom meeting with our readers as many as possible the following weekend to discuss 
the titles and help put together the list. And it, I thought that worked very well this year, didn't you, Sally, to have a Zoom meeting instead of an in-person meeting? Yes, I thought it did work quite well. And when you're doing your voting before that meeting, they ask you to mark all the books on the list that you have read, so keep track of that, and then the up to 10 that you think are quality for the list. And one right. Of the, yeah. One of the things Shauna emphasized at our meeting was, if you've only read 10 books out of say 60, but a couple of them in there are really good, go ahead and vote, mark your 10 you read and vote for the two you think are terrific because that brings more opinions into the whole thing. So you don't have to read more than half or anything. You can set your own goal, but if you only get so many read, still vote for the however many you think are really good, because that's important. I think that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up, Sally. Yes, uh, no matter how many you get read, if you if you don't think you can get the whole list read, that's fine. We still want you to to tell us which ones you read and which ones were the best ones. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Anything else? Maybe we've covered it all. Can you imagine that? I, there are no questions in the question section of the of the form up there, so I think we did a good job. Somebody's going to send you an email later today and say, "By the way, I just got to thinking about," and then you <laughs> answer them. <laughs> right. Well, and a lot of the things we talked about in the PowerPoint are also available right here on the web page. So remember, www.goldensolar.org and and that will take you to our web page and you can uh, find all this information very easily and quickly. I hope can, that no questions doesn't mean we put everybody to sleep, Sally. I hope not, but I'm afraid to, to well, then we don't have them on camera, so we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna say on the web page. People can go there and show, find that section where you showed everybody's email. So when they do have a question, like you, you said, right. next week, then they can find your, oh, contact us. That was it. They can find you or they can find Jill or Dana, whoever they need to contact. Right. You know, I guess I should mention, uh, if you see something on the website that you have a question about or a problem with, or you think there's an error, please do send me an email. Uh, you know, things like updating. Uh, I mean, we, we got our, our winners posted here and I think it was last week, it suddenly dawned on me, I had not updated those places and added the 2020 ones. So, you know, there's too many different places, things that have to be changed or updated and sometimes we forget them. So if you have a question or um, a problem accessing something, on the web page or whatever please contact us and let us know so that if there is a problem that we can take care of that we can do that good point yes you know this whole technology thing <laughs> if i could just it's all great when it works oh i know i was going to mention our virtual museum years ago we had pictures and things up for all the winners back to the beginning. It was just wonderful. And then a number of years ago, we had this huge computer crash. That was when we transferred our web page to Google and made all these changes. And if you go here now, it's under construction. We oh. have things listed here. See, we haven't even updated it to 2020, but we have not been able to put in all the pictures and all that. I'm hoping someday this will happen. But um, as you know, everyone's busy. Our webmaster is a, a school librarian who is very busy. And uh, you know, every time we think we're going to have time to work on it, something like COVID pops up and, and something else takes precedence. So Eventually, I would like to see those pictures that I showed you of Brian Selznick and David Serlin and Serlin uh, posted up here in our virtual museum. That was the whole idea so that kids could go here 
and see the winners uh, with their plaques and things like that. So hopefully, hopefully in the future that will happen. We do have a comment in the question section now. The comment is, thanks ladies, I'm not sleeping. I have enjoyed your presentation a lot. So yay. Oh, thank you, yay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. I guess if we don't have other questions, and I think that Kathy, thank you so much. You did a great job covering all the aspects of this um, wonderful award. It's so great that you're the still the chair of the Golden Sower Committee. If I know she said <laughs> once, if someone else wants to be, they can, but nobody wants to take it away from you. You're too terrific. <laughs> well, someday they're going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> So Kathy Schultz, former librarian, now retired. Yay, so that means she has more time for Golden Sower, right? <laughs> I think that's probably what it is. I, I look at some of the things I've been doing for Golden Sower recently and thinking, how did I get all those things done while I was still working? I don't know, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's nice to be able to, uh, like when I'm uh, proofreading the manual, to be able to sit down and just work on it for several hours without interruption. Now yeah. I've had trouble doing that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for proofreading the manual and thank you also for being here today. And um, if I get any questions, I'll direct them to you. And, okay. Uh, well, thank you, Sally, for lining this up. I, this is always fun. And thanks everybody for coming in today or watching us later to learn more about the Golden Sower Award. And I hope some of you decide to become involved if you haven't before, become a reader, or even suggesting some titles that you think are extra special would be appreciated, so. That's true. So that's the way you can, you can, you can volunteer to, without being on the committee, you volunteer to be a reader, you can volunteer to help with manual pages. I'm gonna mention that again, because Dana said, oh, please, please, please ask people to volunteer. She has some of the titles already spoken for. So if you are interested in a particular title, contact her right away. And hopefully it's still available. If not, I hope you'll pick a different one. But uh, you know, we, we need all your help and input. Uh, I think that makes the manual better too when you have so many different people working on it that have different ideas. Uh, they, they all see it differently than I do, for example. Uh, I worked in, a public library, I didn't necessarily do activities from the manual with the students. So I have more trouble coming up with uh, activities than teachers do. But you come at it from a different angle, so that's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Kathy. Now I'm gonna change presenter back to me so I can okay. wrap this up. Thank you okay. so much. Thanks, Sally. We will, we will um, wave goodbye to everyone. Thank you to everyone who attended. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>